Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Liberty Park Music for another piano etudes lesson. So far in this course, we've done a lot of talking about the five finger close position that we like to think about being in when we're setting up to play our pieces. We've done a lot of working within this position um, and being able to think about being in this position and being able to find it um, is going to be valuable to you no matter how advanced you get. However, um, as you start to play more advanced material, you're going to start to encounter situations that bring you out of that five fingered close position. And and they can actually feel a little bit alarming to be in if you're not used to them. So for this lesson, we're going to look at a short piece by Cornelius Gerlitt that is going to give us the opportunity to experience a little bit of this extension beyond the close five finger position, uh, specifically for our left hands. We're also going to look in depth at the value of seeing repetitions um, in the music. So let's check it out. Let's go ahead and point out our preliminary information first. This piece is in 4-4, four, four, starts with a dynamic of forte and has two treble clefs, meaning that most of the action is going to be happening above middle C. The tempo marking here, vivace, which is the name you see of the piece, very common in classical music to name a piece using its tempo indication, means lively and brisk, so a fast piece if possible. You can also see a few hairpin dynamic markings throughout the piece and a further instruction of risoluto or resolutely, which means play good and confident. One thing that's hopefully getting easier for you to see at this point are the repetitions. We have an A, A prime, B, A prime form happening here, but check out how measures one through three, five through seven, and three through, or 13 through 15 are all exactly the same in both the right hand and the left hand. And boy, if you can see that and think of those three measures really in terms of just copying and pasting, this becomes much easier indeed. Add to that the repetition between measure 8 and the last measure, measure 16, and the very repetitious nature of the B section, and there's really not all that much new material to learn here. You know, we talk a lot about repetitions and about um, how seeing the repetitions and being able to think about them while you're learning the music is just so valuable. Um, so just for fun, let's take a quick look at an amended version of the score in which all of the repeated material is whited out. Now all you're seeing are the instances of new material, and in some cases, even that's a stretch. Notice how the only difference between measure 4 and measure 12 is that the left hand plays two half notes instead of one set of whole notes, but the right hand is the same. Hopefully the effects of seeing how much of the music seems to be missing here really helps to impress upon you the importance of seeing those repetitions, because really, as far as new stuff to learn goes, this is it. The rest is just playing it in the right spots. Of all of the different kinds of challenging music out there, many of the hardest things to learn are things that don't have many repeated spots, like fugues or some fantasy style pieces, and then also the flip side of that music that repeats a tremendous amount, but that only has little changes, like the music of uh, Ligeti or a lot of the minimalists. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into looking at the details of the first measures. So based on the introduction, you might think that the real point of focus here is going to be this left hand, um, and we will indeed be getting into that, but let's take a look at this lively right hand melody first. Now this is a great place to exercise your ability to extract the rhythm from the notes so that you can confirm that you have it um, either by tapping or clapping against a metronome or singing against a beat set by your own clapping like this. A perfect place to work on that. And I highly recommend that you pause the video right now um, to try that, or at least make sure you do it later as you're starting to practice. Um, 
I see way too many students who do not do this. And it's a hugely essential ability and one that's very frequently ignored by beginning pianists. Uh, for what reason? I do not know. My guess is that the temptation to put your fingers on the keyboard immediately is just too great sometimes, which I definitely understand. But really, some of the best work you can do in service to your learning efficiency is to focus on what you can learn away from the keyboard in the form of exercises like this, or by writing in helpful notes or analyses on the music. Anyway, that's my declamation for the lesson. <laughs> So practice the rhythm, and once you get that, you'll be ready to put um, it under your fingers. Um, now, the real nice thing here is that the right hand stays in the five-finger close position on this high C above, um, above middle C for the whole piece, including the B section. So once you get your hand into position here, that's where it will stay. Then it's just a matter of making sure you have that rhythm and paying attention to which finger should be playing what. And you should get something that sounds like this. Try and make sure those spots with the slurs get played nice and legato. Um, and this is definitely one of those places, too, where thinking more in terms of finger numbers instead of notes can potentially help you. It's probably a bit easier for your brain to think one, one, two, three, one, two, five, five, four, three, two instead of the same thing with the notes. So do write your finger numbers more completely if you feel like that will make things easier. Now moving down to measure five, we have the same thing, only this time we have a little alteration to the last measure to set us up for going into our B section. And in that B section, we have further benefits of repetition. Notice that for a first, uh, for the full three measures, um, or I should say the first full three measures, we have one thing we're playing in the right hand. This straight quarter notes figure on two, five, three, one. Super easy and not even anything rhythmic to get in your way there. And then for the end, we just repeat measures 5 through 8 in measures 13 through 16. Like that. So once again, repetitions, very important for making your learning easier. Okay, let's go back to the top to look at the left hand. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.